Hey guys, what's going on? Cyberfury here, bringing you guys some GT7 online racing. Today we've got three races around Spa, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite tracks to drive regardless of game that I'm playing. Currently we are in the 99 GTR GT3 car, and this is because at the time I didn't really have any other GT3 cars that really qualified for this race, and I know this car isn't really used a whole lot, I don't think I saw it at all during my playtime so far anyway so i decided to hop in it see how it would do and see how some of these like non-meta cars would do at the time keep in mind this is before the big physics update and some of the bop changes that happened in gt7 but regardless i wanted to see how it did Spa is quickly becoming one of my favorite tracks as i've said and it's simply because i feel like it's got a little bit of everything in it that you could want within a track not saying it's the de facto track or the end all be all of racing tracks, but I will say that it has a lot of different components that you are looking for in a track itself. You've got long straightaways, you've got a hairpin, you've got a couple of chicanes, and you've got sweeping curves, you've got important braking points, which I clearly missed one right there. And I feel like you've got a little bit of everything that you could want within a track to drive around to help practice all of the different racing concepts that you would need for any track in any race. Speaking of breaking points, there's another missed one here as me and the guy in front of me both missed that, playing a little bit of chicken with each other side by side there, both going in too deep and not being able to recover from it here. However, he goes deep on this corner and I see a perfect opportunity to pull the old switcheroo on him and I do that diving up the inside there taking back the spot that I had and couldn't quite stick a little while ago. So no harm, no foul here as we don't end up losing the position that we started in, but we don't really end up gaining anything from it either, so it's kind of a mixed bag of results. Coming around the final stretch of this track, it seems like we're going to be ending up in the same position where we started, which isn't really the worst thing in the world, but you want to try and make your way up the field as quickly as possible to give yourself as much race as possible to gain as many spots. I mean, to the final chicane here, I noticed that the guy in front of me is going a little bit deep, losing it a little bit, so I decided to try to sneak up the inside here and take that position away from him on the straight on this little bit of a drag race, and he kind of falls behind. On the next lap here, we come around the corner, and there is an incredibly close situation. You see just how close that was with the Audi, and so the GT7 safety system deserves a round of applause on that one, as we actually did clip through the Audi there, but I think he was able to turn ethereal before we ended up hitting him. Coming around the final corner here on this lap, we end up in a drag race with the Corvette as we both kind of botch the final chicane here. As we drag race towards turn one, I end up taking a very shallow line on the inside. He ends up going way around. I expected him to kind of cut to a lot closer than that, so he was able to carry so much speed around that corner and just take off, and which I am now playing catch up here. As we jump forward a little bit in the lap, you just saw the first spirit of spot disappearing into the wind as we came close. And then coming around this corner here, we're going to see a car that is very much not a spirit here as the Corvette in front absolutely punts him back into the wall. Originally, I thought that I had gained two spots here, but apparently GT7 had other ideas, giving me a three second penalty for passing on a caution. Despite the fact the other car was going probably 10 miles an hour, I assumed that he'd slowed down because he made contact causing that spin and causing the guy to lose contact which then got punted into the wall unfortunately by the Corvette. But you know, GT7 always has other ideas doesn't it? As we come towards the deceleration line I thought, okay well if he has a similar style penalty I can probably catch him on the deceleration here and nope. He was only given a second and a half for that, I was given three seconds. Not complaining, just kind of pointing things out that it didn't really work out here so I was unable to catch him moving forward here onto the final lap we're going to come up on what is going to probably look like a seventh place finish until this car in front ends up losing control here and ends up losing control again turning 90 degrees into the wall on that right hand corner there so that about does it I couldn't quite catch the Corvette again after our little drag race into T1 and we end up coming across the line in a semi-respectable sixth position, up five spots from where we started. 
so not perfect, but not terrible either. For race two, I decided, you know what, let me try another car. Maybe that would yield better results, so I hopped in the Mercedes Benz, and we slapped on the Tony the Tiger Kellogg's livery here in order to help yield better results. It actually did in the beginning as we qualified in P5 this time instead of in P11. We actually are already up on where we finished in the last race, so pretty promising start so far here. As we prevent ourselves from having to deal with a lot of the mid-pack shenanigans that goes on when you're a little bit further back, and this happens in all racing games, not just GT7, it happens absolutely everywhere no matter where you go, so normally you'd want to qualify as far forward as you can, not just to try and hold the lead or to try and pull away from the pack, but to not have to deal with those shenanigans that occur. Coming off of the straight, I end up making a pretty optimistic move on the inside that does not pan out for me at all. And look out as the Toyota goes spinning off to the left there. I end up not only losing a position originally on the move, but we end up getting it back with the Toyota. Figuring I got a better jump than the guy in front, I end up taking the inside on this corner here as another guy passes right through me. As all this is going on, we end up making the move stick. And we end up not botching this corner here so as you can see i am learning certain things and i am learning here and as the video goes on naturally you're going to see better and better driving as we got used to spa here but i don't want to toot my horn too much as the next corner i kind of lose it then try and regain control and absolutely do not as this is completely where everything just goes wrong trying to recover the car on that slide could not hit too much grip here now having this egregious rejoin as luckily i'm able to wield the power of quantum physics to zap in and out of existence exactly when I need to, which prevents an absolutely horrific crash as the car behind goes right between the two doors here. So I will give myself a little bit of credit though. My wheel at this point was feeling weird. It was like hypersensitive and also not sensitive at the same time. I don't know if anybody else has experienced this problem, but it does not get any better for me here. The wheel basically, I had to crank it all the way to the side as you can see here and the car would barely turn as well as there was no force feedback anymore within the wheel so I don't know if there was a little bit of a hiccup there with the wheel or what was going on. I end up having a moment where I ponder if I wanted to end it all here it all being the race naturally don't know where your mind would go with that but I decide you know what let's press on let's kind of forget about this worst comes to worst we end up in last place best case scenario we get a couple positions and a good story to talk about how we came back from the depths of last place but unfortunately that's just not in the cards for us here coming around the final lap we are still a mile and some behind everybody else unfortunately however i do end up being in a kind of race that I did not expect myself to be and I was not aware that when the person in first place finishes on GT7 it starts down a countdown timer that you then have to try and beat to the line otherwise you get a did not finish so we ended up I think beating the timer by like 10 or 20 seconds that's just how far back we were after pondering everything but either way that's just going to be a race that we want to wash our hands of. Though naturally with the line of thinking where changing cars yields better results, I changed cars yet again into the GTR 2013 GT3, and it actually does end up yielding better results. Qualifying in P2 for this race instead of in P11 or in P5 as we did before, we're already up again again on our best position so far. In this race I wanted to really stress trying to drive as clean as possible or trying to at least be aware of everybody on the road and try to anticipate moves such as braking zones and whatnot. So you might see a little bit of weird stuff happening in this race here as I try to be more conscious of that. Coming into, especially when behind this Porsche here, he brakes extremely aggressively and I'm not quite sure why if that's really how you're supposed to do it, but he ends up being way ahead and then like right in front of me and then way ahead again, so I don't know if it's a connection thing. But like right here, he breaks super hard on this corner. I end up giving a little bit of a knock, but being the good driver that I'm trying to be, I don't really try and pass him here as the guy from P3 uses become ethereal to then go right through me and take P2 in this absolutely amazing move. She got not just once, but twice here, becoming ethereal to take that spot away. So as we jump back here, the Porsche goes off veers off onto the right. I don't know if that was an evasive move or if that was just a like overcorrection or what was happening there, but either way, 
It was kind of a weird scenario to all of a sudden see P1 just veer off onto the grass for no apparent reason. Coming into these curves here, I decide, you know what, I can probably take him up the inside. I don't know if that was an actual legitimate bump or if that was a network bump here, but I decide, you know what, I can leave him some space. And he runs me wide. So, unfortunately, the old saying is true, you know, give an inch and they'll take a mile, as I thought I gave him enough room on the inside here. But, unfortunately, that's just not the way this is, and he kind of takes the hot lap line, pushes me off track onto the gravel, and I end up losing a few positions here, ending up in P5th after all is said and done. Trying to continue on with the race with a little bit of, uh, I guess, a little bit of disappointment in my head. I then lose another position back to Lifestyle as he reclaims the spot in front of me where he was before. So not only do we drop some positions, we drop yet another one back to P6. But not to be discouraged, I want to take back the position as soon as possible. I try to drive super aggressive around this corner, which is a mistake in hindsight here. But he ends up becoming ethereal and carrying too much speed here. And I need to become ethereal here to not drive him off the course by accident, going super deep into the chicane to end off the lap. And that causes me to lose yet another position. So naturally, we're just out here casually losing five positions in a single lap, which is not in really what you want to do. Um, so take notes on what you don't want to do, which is this race. So moving on to lap two, I decided this is my chance to mentally reset to make sure that this is sort of the clean slate lap that we want it to be and to kind of carry on from here and see how many spots we can make it back up. We know in this lobby that we're probably running about P2. So in terms of the speed of things, we can probably catch back up. But we need to race clean to get there and not have any more shenanigans go on. As we come along the straight here, I roll up beside the Audi. Trying to regain that position of P6, and I decide, you know what, I can take the inside here and I'll have enough space and enough speed to do it, but unfortunately he just does an amazing job hanging around the outside, carrying all that speed onto this next section here, but I decide to try again as I get a better jump on that corner and end up taking the inside here and sticking it, finally, to get that move done. Now back in P6, we can continue our quest back up to P2. Focusing on the cars ahead and focusing on racing clean and fast to get back up there. You can see there's a bit of a gap between us and P5, but there's also some battling going on between P2, P3, and P4. I believe at this point it's a little bit of smoke. The car in front goes a little out of control, and wouldn't you know it, wouldn't my luck have it, not only does he just veer off, but he snap oversteers and turns like 90 degrees to hit us in the quarter panel and send us flying. Luckily this time around, it wasn't like last race where we ended up kissing the wall. We were able to keep the car under control. However, the Audi that we had worked so hard to pass there has just now taken its spot back. So technically, while I haven't lost any positions and we're still in the same spot we were, it doesn't feel like that since Pete and the Audi in front ended up taking back his spot there and kind of gaining a spot overall. Jumping forward to the next lap here, the two Audis go at it, and I end up making kind of a risky move up the inside. It's probably an illegal move to be on the grass like that, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to go up the inside here, and then I end up going a little bit too deep into the braking zone and giving a tap to the Audi in front, who then starts spinning out, and I get PTSD as I think he's going to come and spin me out, but from the mini-map, he doesn't. He kind of misses me and causes havoc behind, and then around this corner, I'm going to get one of the fastest overtakes into a podium position in my life here as one of the other spirits of spa disappears into the wind allowing me to take a third spot without much hassle there i wanted to point out that the audi that i went a little bit deep into was actually the same audi that drove me wide at the beginning of the race it wasn't a malicious move as it might look like it it was just me simply going a little bit too deep into the braking zone and giving him a little bit of a love tap. I didn't intend to actually run him off the road or anything like that. While I wasn't going to make any you know, extra precautions for him as he ran me wide and I had a little bit of a grudge going on, I also didn't want to actually catapult him off of the road either. So it is what it is, believe what you want there. But we come across the line to finish this race in P3. So down one position overall, but we were able to get back to a podium position after all that happened. So I'll consider that a success. Let me know down in the comments if you believe that was a malicious move or a racing incident. I know it kind of looks one way or the other, so I'm kind of curious to see what you guys think about that. Also, let me know if it was an illegal move to move up the grass like that. I'm just curious as to what it actually would be 
considering that two tires were still on the track, if that's considered a valid move or not. Again, people that know more than I do. Again, curious to see what you think. As always, feel free to leave me feedback. If you liked the video, tell me why. If you didn't like the video, tell me why. Give me suggestions on what I can improve on, not only just with the driving, but with the video production itself. Always loving to hear from you guys down in the comments there, so make sure you're not a stranger. And with that, if you feel obliged to, hit the subscribe button as well, bringing more GT7 content as well as some other racing games pretty soon here on the channel as I try to kind of branch out down this racing journey that I'm on. I hope you enjoyed, and in any capacity, thank you for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.